so again, while statement very similar, do well also very similar. Uh, I think the do well stuff is, I, you know, some people like to have it on the uh, attached to it. I'm not even really sure there. I I, I just kind of went with that. I don't like the keywords being uh, after the brace, but I could see where people that this is almost kind of more preventing you from thinking that it's this. But I think that's where the semicolon comes in. Is you should know that if there's a semicolon at the end of while, hey, you know. Um, by the way, yeah, that's another rule I just kind of go with is semicolons is just, I think, good practice because if you're doing, if you're going to do other languages like C Sharp, C, whatever languages that actually enforce semicolons, it's a good habit to get into. It also is a way of really expressing, hey, this is when it's meant to be ending and it's a little more explicit in how you write. So that's another debatable thing. Switch statements. Um, yeah, I love switch statements. That's just me. Uh, where does my where does that sample at? Um, you'll see here. I do believe that case statements should have, um, you, you know, basically an indent to be clear where the code is, and then it allows for people to make a decision about do they want to put a, a new line after the break or not, and still have it be readable. Try catch statements. Uh, you know, you can see here pretty straightforward stuff. I don't know why you wouldn't want to put them on the new line. I, yeah, I, I just that I don't even know why that was even an option, but that's maybe somebody else's opinion about that. Binary expressions, I really, really, really tried to play with this, and I just don't like it. Uh, and, and basically, what it's saying is that sure, I would love to be able to see pluses and minuses go to the next line, um, and you know, there. But where it breaks is in certain cases where it's actually taking these kind of boolean operations, uh, and that would normally be grouped together and putting them on a new line like it's just really weird yeah this is terrible I, I, I think this just makes it very hard to read um, whereas if you just uh, leave it alone everything looks good it's very easy to read and we kind of move on uh, assignment statement chop down if long um, I don't even know oh yes you can't really see it here there's not really a good example of it but it actually is pretty cool. It's basically, if this statement here is really, really, really long, imagine having a very long variable name, and then it got even longer. It will actually put it on the other other line, very much like the question mark and colon will be on a new line. And I actually think it looks nice when you actually see it. Um, it's, again, it's something that's not like super big deal, but it is kind of cool. Uh, again, ternary operations, chop down with long. I love this type of operation where you see the Boolean and you know what the results are on a new line. I, I think this is way more readable than not. Um, but it also, again, you know, this, this is again just chopping down along. You don't really need to have it be this. It's just if it, if it needs to be more readable, obviously, if it's like drifting off past the margin. Uh, okay, so uh, array initializers. Uh, I think this is way more readable than having it be off sideways that you just immediately see what the options are. Um, I also put that I think it's good to have this as a starting and this is an ending cap uh, before and after. Um, and then that's pretty much it. And I don't remember what the object literals were. <laughs> uh, but it, yeah, I mean, it doesn't even show. Oh, here we go. Oh, okay. There we go. So chop down of long. It's just, yeah, I mean, doesn't that read better? I, I don't know. I think that's great. Um, blank lines. Uh, I like this interesting feature. I don't think you need more than two blank lines to indicate separation. Um, so that's kind of a nice thing is that if you had more than three or more than two, I mean, it would just trim them down to, to, to two, which is cool. I mean, you could put three. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then uh, lastly, I find this really important in code style is, yeah, in WebStorm, it should not align these comments because you might have styled your comments magically the way you want. Um, I don't think aligning to, uh, I, I found playing around with this is kind of cool, but the problem is, is these properties get really long and, and oddly placed and, and, and it starts to just get really weird uh, in how it looks and I think it's just better overall to not really care uh, in this case. And then align var statements to, and assignments. This I found interesting as an option having for both. I found and I will demonstrate that I think this is the best option for um, kind of allowing for variances of, of different alignments of properties. Uh, and of course, obviously, it says coding style use semicolon to terminate statements. Okay, so there's code style. We're, we're going to move on from looking at this setting. Uh, I think we're done. Uh, you know, boom. 
Now we're going to look at how it looks in, say, for example, this case I'm using the gulp file for my CSS helpers project to demonstrate what this code style looks like. Now I can sit here and go and go code and uh, where are we at? Uh, reformat code and voila. Oh, look at this. It actually moved this over. I forgot to do that. That's awesome. Now, oh, see, it's going to do this tab thing, which is uh, JS Lint's going to complain about, but I'm not. <laughs> so uh, it's an interesting thing about JS Lint how it wants to do spaces here for this stuff. And I actually think that's fine because, see, in this case, you've got this, uh, you know, this happening here where there's these spaces happening. And I think that actually works pretty well. But in other cases, like this blocking, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But for a, to make sure your variables all line up, four spaces makes a lot of sense. Um, and in this case, when I did the, re the auto formatting, it didn't bother changing these because it actually made sense to be like that. Um, and it might even be just part of how it aligns these uh, lines of variables. So you can see, like if I undo, you can see that by auto formatting, it moved that over and kept these aligned. And I think that's pretty nice, you know, like, and notice that it, it keeps them aligned based upon your individual, uh, like, like block of a var or block of a constant and how it lines things up. So that's pretty cool. Uh, there is some interesting stuff where people might think this is weird, like, oh, why isn't it over here? Oh, I don't like it. Well, the reason why is because it's following the rule that the parameters are long and they need to be broken down. And so for me, I just, I, I've kind of learned to, to like this, that you're starting a gulp task and that's name, name of that task is this. And then I kind of go from here where I'll define maybe some comments and uh, and declare the function and go from here. So again, I hope that this video is also inspiring people to really focus on writing elegant code and writing good comments and just, just good code. You know, like it's nice to look at code and go, wow, this reads very easily. And if people think this reads terrible, please tell me. Like, uh, I, I, I need to know these. I want to know these things. I want to know where these opinions that, you know, are, are the, the opinions that I'm missing the point somewhere. Um, and, you know, it, it's really good for me because I feel like I'm always evolving in how I write the code and I'm always trying to make it so that, you know, it's, I, can, I can appease as many people in a sense of what is readable. Uh, you know, can't appease everybody, but it wouldn't it be nice to, to hit the masses as much as possible. So, again, this is auto-formatted code uh, with some variance on how I actually decide how I want the code to lay out. And it, you know, I think it reads pretty darn good. Now, some interesting things just to point out before we uh, um, we finish up. Why did I format it this way? Um, you know, for this gulp file, I put the dependencies on top. I basically just declared what is the default task uh, actually require. Um, I've got some constants in here that again are just being declared. I also have some variables that are going to be again. It's a variable because it's an array, um, and it has uh, some properties here. Uh, for the actual paths, and then we define the the tasks very blocked out as well. Um, good commenting, uh, you know. I'm only putting things where I need them. Like for example, these dependencies are run across multiple tasks, whereas like source maps only exists inside of this function. So why declare it anywhere but there? Uh, and then I have like a nice source maps option. I talk about why. Um, you know, I say, hey, this is for standard CSS, this is for minified. I have them both uh, happening within the same function because I really believe that if you're going to make a change to one less file or one source SAS or whatever, you might as well render out the both results. Don't leave one unrendered. Uh, and then we have this version that's called release, uh, which is, you know, without source maps. And then even I just, for just to be friendly, and I believe in being friendly to other people's opinions, uh, we've got a SAS converter, which doesn't work uh, because there's some certain conversions that just don't go across. Um, but it's nice to have because somebody might load this project and say, hey, I want uh, a SAS version, we'll kind of go from there. So, you know, enough about the project and everything, just kind of going over how uh, the JavaScript actually renders out and looks clean. And so I hope this, you know, this may be a little bit of a long video, but I, I really hope that people um, get some value out of this and, uh, you know, aspire them or, or uh, um, 
you know, inspire them to, to write elegant and clean code uh, for the future. Uh, that's it. If you like this video, please, you know, like it if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it. Uh, comments are super welcome. Uh, I'm not just saying that. This I think this is an act has actual value uh, if people comment to, you know, help everybody kind of uh, open their eyes to possibilities of how code should be styled. And uh, that's it. Have a great day.